Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by REC Comics and Collectibles. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always... Eric Icarus. Eric! What's up, man? You can find us on the gram at REC mm-hmm, Podcast. Mm-hmm. You can follow myself at Roman REC Podcast. And you can follow Eric wherever drinks are served, <laughs> wherever they're imbibed, wherever they're enjoyed, because this man uh-huh. is life of the party. Uh-huh, all right? Uh-huh. With us, as always, and hopefully for all time... The Big Tuna. Oh, this way. Yeah, The Big Tuna. Hey, hello. The Big Tuna. There Welcome. we go. Jordan Tunney with us. He does have a real name, but uh, I do refer to him as The Big Tuna. How Jordan, did that name come about? Was it just So, uh, it's really stupid on my part. Fair enough. Um, Jordan reminds me of Ed Helms, like mm-hmm, a lot, mm-hmm. especially in his slimmer days. Okay. Um, and Hey, Ed, Ed Helms looks great right now. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, in the office, Ed Helms would call, uh, oh my God, what's his Jim name? Jim Halpert. Jim Halpert, Big, Big Tuna. Tuna. Okay. But I called Jordan Big Tuna. I thought it was because of Tunny. Kind of, it kind of, phonetically. And I similar. think that's what, that's, that's what like connected oh, okay, in the brain. Okay. But yeah, so I am the only one who calls him Big Tuna in our, in our uh, oh, REC faithful. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard uh, Casey say it. Good. Oh yeah, actually, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, the, the group does. The group okay, does. oh, fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. but uh, I'm hoping to get it uh, worldwide um, as quickly as possible, all right? <laughs> Fun fact, I don't even like tuna. So. Yeah, yeah. Who does? All right, who does? I, I, it's fine. Yeah, I like raw tuna. I like I like I like spicy tuna. Ooh. spicy tuna roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are that's pretty bomb. Yeah. yeah, it is. You know, it's weird that I like raw fish way more than I like cooked fish. Honestly. I get it. I get it. Why? I, I Why? Just, there's just more of that natural sea flavor it is. to it. You know? yeah, yeah, and it's not like overpowered. That's what I'm saying. You know? yeah, yeah, it's very fresh of the ocean. Well, you talk, I, we, I work at this restaurant, and we were talking about we serve deviled eggs there, and they're uh, fried. Yeah. And my, my boy here brought up a good point why they're fried, and I didn't even think about it until he told me. Yeah, because I, I think it keeps the, the funk down. Because we've all, like, if you like deviled eggs, and, <laughs> and I love deviled eggs, because they're a treat. Big tuna. Where, where are you at on deviled eggs? Controversial pick. I don't even like eggs either. <laughs> so, I, I, anyway. I, I don't like anything. I'm like my great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting door to open up on After Dark. Uh, the if you if you love them, they're funky, man. They get stinky. They get stinky. They get, but when you, when you fry them, it keeps that funk level but down. Fry when you butt fry them. <laughs> It keeps that funk level down. All right, so um, yeah, I didn't think about that. That's, that's the awesome. RAC cooking uh, corner for today. Uh, we wanted to actually talk about in the news this weekend on, uh, I believe, New Year's Day. Uh, Avenger Hawkeye mm-hmm. himself, Jeremy Renner, was involved in a really bad accident. Yes. It was uh, being reported early that uh, it was possibly some type of uh, uh, snowcat accident or what is it, a bobcat? Or something. Not an actual animal, Jordan. Help me. <laughs> uh, you think of a mountain lion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, he was, he was mauled by some type of snow tiger. No, uh, some type of snow plow incident. Um, they were saying that he was in critical condition. He had injuries to his leg, is what I saw first. My wife told me about the chest injuries. Right. And it was, you know, sounded, you know, they said he was in critical but stable condition. Um, so how, did, how does he go about getting plowed into? What happened? <clears throat> was he digging somebody out? So it's... It sounded like, you know, he lives in, in this area of Nevada that right. actually does get snow, obviously. And, uh, and he'll often, it sounds like he goes being out there and he helps. Yeah, he's a good Samaritan. Yeah, a a good Samaritan. And uh, the mayor of, of his town was saying that he'll often try to help people out when if he sees them on the side of the road. Right. And it sounds like he was trying to save somebody. Um, crazy, man. He posted this photo of himself. He looks real messed up. Yeah. Uh, Jordan was telling me that he, he's not really able to speak right now. He put that in the, in the post. Uh, he said like he can't talk too well, um, but uh, uh, but yeah, definitely kind of want to reassure fans get a get a picture in there. Uh, but yeah, it does does sound like he does have a little bit of a road to to go for healing. So. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna be the Skip Bayless of this group, right? Um, and it might be the MJ on me, but it's really weird how this whole thing got reported. Okay. All right. Lay it on me. I have what the kids may call skeptical hippo eyes, <laughs> um, because if you're like. Okay, if you're Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. what do you hear about? Oh, Tom Cruise pulled over on the side of the road to help this woman deliver her baby, and then he paid for all the hospital bills. Yeah, like right, that's right. the thing you hear about. Well, you know, the crazy on the flip side is like you hear about Keanu Reeves doing this, but it's like years later. Years later, yes. Then you hear about Keanu stuff. Okay, but like to 
the Tom Cruise's and the Jay Leno's. Yeah, yeah. It's like that hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so it's really weird to me that um, it's reported that he's injured and like the hero stuff is reported. Yeah, it's like within a day. But, like, it feels like that would have been the top of the story. Maybe, like, I, I wish we had more details. Right. Because, I don't know, it just feels, it feels weird. Am I, am I being paranoid? The internet makes me paranoid. Well, I, I think that... It's I, not that I, I think, think anything bad happened. No, it's just, I mean, so what, are you implying that he did it to himself? In, in, a, in a skeptical, because, kind of crazy yeah, way. Well, because that's how it was being reported at first. Right. So, that he, like, backed the snow? Like, yeah. Because, uh, uh, Jordan, help me out here. What's the Star Trek guy? Uh, Anton Yelchin. Mm, yes, yeah. it sounded like that situation. For those who don't know what Anton what Yelchin, uh, is a f- former Star Trek actor, passed away uh, because he was uh, trying to get into his gate at home, if I remember correctly. Uh, there was some type of possible malfunction with it. He got out to, to, to adjust it or something, and his car ends up basically hitting him and pinning him against the gate, correct? Right. Something like that. Okay. And uh, it's... Yeah, and that's kind of like that was like what was in the air sure. that he might have injured himself. I don't know. And they're trying to spin it to like, no, he was helping somebody. <laughs> and and but you know and and again, I I don't want to sound disrespectful. I just it's weird and like to have the mayor like and him and the mayor <laughs> are friends. Like I've been watching too much TV or or something. For sure. But uh, I don't know. I like where this is going. <laughs> it's it it's interesting. I. I, I hope everything's good. I, I, I you know, speedy recovery. Does the mayor like come up to him in the hospital and go, "Hail Hydra"? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. This is the whole Hydra maneuver. Um, Nobody would know. Nobody. The last I saw him, an Ultron was sitting on him. I, yeah, he'll be missed. That quick little bastard. Which. Begs the question yes. in our in our uh, in our field here. Yeah. Um, speedy recovery. Uh, you know he's he's in the uh, you know obviously he's he was in Hawkeye season one. Mm-hmm. We're talking Hawkeye season two eventually. Um, yeah. Are we are we going with Hawkeye still? I don't know how I feel about it. I think his his run is up. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he was the character that had the best tie off. Mm-hmm. He has the family. Yeah. Got the family back. Perfect character to retire. Yeah. Yeah. Why bring him back? Yeah. I mean, I feel like that he did everything he can for the team. You know, maybe a cameo here and there yeah. in movies. Yeah. I would love to see Hawkeye be the Giles of the sure. group. Sure. You know, where we're, we're like the, these younger Avengers. Well, he's about to be the man in the chair. <sighs> man, that's brutal. <laughs> it sounded like they had to tie a tourniquet, like a neighbor had to tie a tourniquet to <laughs> mm-hmm. his leg. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the, I mean, the story is fascinating in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> and the world is weird, and and we'll see where it goes. But uh, you know, with things yeah. like Thunderbolts coming up, yes. you know, we have a very, very like solid medium for the street level heroes oh, to yeah. to have a prominent role. Um, we have had recent news of Captain America Four: New World Order, uh, where we'll be New following uh, Sam Wilson's Captain America, and in our uh, first official. Tuna tag out. Uh, Jordan is going to switch places with me, and he's going to explain this very, very interesting internet. You better do the tag. You, you better do the tag on right. camera. Yeah, we, 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 we got to figure out a tag. Well, you're coming it's, in through the ropes. Am I coming across? <laughs> and then elbow. And then elbow. And then elbow. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's the tuna <laughs> tag. Yeah, high five and elbow. And then I get to sit in the comfy chair. What chair? Yeah. So Captain America, <laughs> uh, upcoming Captain America movie uh, with Sam Wilson taking over the. Uh, the shield mm-hmm. as uh, the new Captain America. Uh, the movie's uh, being referred to as New World Order. It's kind of the subtitle. Uh-huh. Uh, we know that William Hurt's passing as uh, the the MCU's uh, uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, General Thaddeus Ross. Thaddeus Ross uh, uh, definitely um, really raised a lot of eyebrows. Yeah, when totally. William Hurt passed. There was a lot of talk about whether or not do you recast Ross. I I made the comment to Roman the other day that if 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 you were done right. with the character, yeah. you I, you could send it off. The fact that they recast Harrison Ford yes. as as uh, uh, as Ross in the upcoming film, and with Harrison's uh, comments recently about wanting to do some some things he hasn't done professionally, sure. a lot of people have speculated that he may be referring to motion capture. Uh, in which Makes case, sense. Red Hulk, uh, the, yeah, yeah, know, uh, playing we the uh, antagonistic Hulk. 
Uh, that could definitely be something we haven't seen Harrison Ford really do. Right. Uh, maybe some of the de-aging stuff they've done for the new Indiana Jones film, but definitely nothing to, you know, on this scale. No, no. Well, not a lot's known about the plot, but there's definitely some rumors circulating that Eternals, which is kind of the uh, the redheaded stepchild of the MCU uh, and uh, Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> uh, uh, may actually have some significance and relevance. Other than the occasional background, you know, you've got a, a billboard with uh, with this character mm -hmm. or a reference to this person's name right. from Eternals, but actually give us some concrete uh, plot and story driven. Uh, 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 action and, and details from Eternals. Yeah. So you might recall, if you watched Eternals, uh, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> you haven't vaguely, vaguely that uh, the the movie centered around awakening Eternal, an yes. Eternal that was here on Earth. Mm -hmm. Well, they end up stopping it and it ends up being this giant body floating in the Atlantic or in the Indian Ocean. <laughs> Indian Ocean. Yes. Indian Ocean. Yeah. Uh, just just straight arm coming out of the water, partially partial like head peeking out of the ocean. Great part in the movie. Great part in the movie. Yeah. I, I love Eternals. So it's led a lot of people to wonder, like, why hasn't this come up? Right. You know? I yeah. Mean, like, I mean, That's you know. true. We don't talk too much about, you know, uh, 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 you know geology, geomorphology <laughs> or sure. anything. Yeah. But I promise you that if there was a world incident in which a, uh, a being of some kind arose from some part of the, the ocean, uh, it would make its way into the REC podcast. <laughs> yes. So so some have, some have speculated and wondered, and this is the big rumor mill right now, yes. uh, that not only are we going to be getting a, a Red Hulk, Ross, right. in uh, New World Order, but the New World Order mm. subtitle might refer to the idea that there's going to be a new arms race. And if you look at a lot of Phase 4, a lot of it's talked about uh, uh, vibranium mm -hmm. with uh, with Wakanda and Wakanda forever. We've got sort of this, uh, you know, it really kind of puts the arms race approach. All these countries want uh, the vibranium. Right. The Wakandans don't want to give it. Talokan yeah. has it. They want they want to close off access to that. They don't want people encroaching on their territory. And so some are wondering that maybe we'll see the other. Uh, indestructible material, metal, yeah. in, in comics, and that uh -huh. is adamantium. Yes. So um, uh, it could be, it's being speculated, that the, the skeletal remains of Tiamut, the, the uh, celestial, uh, will in fact produce or create or decompose into right. the MCU's adamantium, which explains why it hasn't existed to now being introduced, exactly. especially if you're going to bring in Wolverine. Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we have precedent for that with in Guardians, nowhere the Tavon Corporation mining the the celestial head for brain matter and bone marrow and blah blah blah. It's it's a very logical and something that that we know has happened. Mm -hmm. So it'll be cool to see what we can do. As because what if only vibranium can penetrate this? That, to penetrate like yeah, the outside to right. get to the inside, you know. Yeah. So like, there's going to be because the vibranium is definitely out there to an extent. It's obviously widely controlled by the two tribes. Oh sure. But it's it's not the. I mean, Cap Shield was a gift, but again, we, we can right. always infer, and especially now that 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 uh, meteor broke up and there would be little pieces. I would love for Latveria to be a spot. It's. It's a little weird, like, then there's all these, like, pockets of, like, super that's, advanced, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I, it, it's too many, it's getting a little too fragmented at Yeah, that that's true, as um, I was walking through it. I didn't like it, uh, Jordan's like, theory, it. though, about how, you, you were talking about how their body armor would dissipate in the presence of, if we did get adamantium. <laughs> oh, that was not, that was not a legit tag. By yeah, the yeah, way. No, yeah, yeah, the illegal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, um, uh, so there have been some other theories that have yeah. kind of spun off that. Right. Uh, some of which uh, are, are my own. Yes. <laughs> Trademark tuna. Or uh, it, trademark <laughs> tuna. <laughs> so uh, one of the, one of the things, you know, we, we're, 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 we know that Marvel is heading in the direction of giving us mutants. Yes. X-Men is going to be a priority. Uh, I, I, I wonder if phase seven will be a, a mutant-centric phase. Got there's it. so many stories they can do, uh, and, and I think there's some ways that they can change it and sure. adapt it and make it work. But here's here's what I'm wondering. Yes. So uh, uh, in the comics, mm -hmm. and you can pull from your lore, and, and Roman has lore knowledge as well, uh, mutants have had special places where they've been able to go to. Right. right? I'm thinking of the Savage Land. What else is there? Genosha. Genosha, right? Okay. Asteroid M. Yeah, so so it could be it could be that uh, yes, this the skeletal body that's decomposing produces uh, adamantium, right? Uh, but maybe the organic composition 
creates one of those islands. Or yeah, there you, you go. Know? Kokoa. So, yeah, which Kokoa. is a living mutant island. Yes. There we go, yeah. Or, or how about this? Here's another uh, interesting theory I'm going to throw out there. So... You know, one of the one of the problems with introducing things that are are all powerful. Uh, right. You know, when you give us Superman in yes. DC Comics, you have to give us something that is equal to or greater than as a threat to Superman. Right, right, right. Otherwise, right. it's it's, it's not going to be. What's the point? Yeah. Right. So we've already seen now in two films the the Wakandans are are experts in vibranium. Uh, yeah. And uh, it sounds like we're gonna we're gonna see more of Talokan and Namor's people. Yeah. They're also experts in vibranium as as well. Yeah. I don't know how much space there is for another indestructible metal. Right? <laughs> sure. Sure. But here's what I wonder: How cool would it be? Here's the theory. Yes. How cool would it be if adamantium in the MCU has the ability to negate vibranium? Yeah, I, love I mean, this so much power and energy and technology. <clears throat> uh, I mean, the Wakandans. Yes, they'll have a they'll have a vibranium spear. Sure. But their 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 communications technology, their ship technology, their defense technology, all of it is based in vibranium. Yes. What if this this metal essentially just EMPs it? Right. What if What if? Could you imagine how cool this would be? We're down the road. We're in phase seven. So we're getting our Avengers versus X Men story, right? Right, and you've got a a young Black Panther, Toussaint. Spoiler alert! <laughs> and he's got his vibranium suit, and we get our Wolverine, and he flexes those claws, and when those claws flex out, yeah. that Black Panther armor just dissipates. Yes, almost like it's hiding. How cool Ooh. would that be? See, I like that because right. yeah, it gives the like you said greater greater than or equal to the uh, you know hero. Got to have that. Well, not, and, not hero necessarily, but the other yeah. weapon. And Wakanda Forever, both on the international scene and between Talokan and, and Wakanda, uh, the movie does set up this whole idea of, like, you're not going to take our vibranium. Right. Y there, you might go out for it, sure. but you're not going to go to Talokan, and you're not going to go to Wakanda, right? Right, right. But it, it would be very interesting thematically in terms of a plot and story and, and, and creating conflict and tension. Oh, yeah. If adamantium is discovered that it can... I mean, it is the ultimate super weapon. Right, right. And now those those groups, they're going to have to intervene. Yes. Now this is about their national sovereignty, oh, their yeah. borders, their people, their oh, identity. Yeah. I mean, that could reestablish a new world order. Oh, see? Ooh, today's uh, today's Ooh. empire, tomorrow's ashes. Yep. Ooh, that was it. That was it. Yep. All right. There we that, go. That's an interesting right. thing. There, there we go. go. Bring it in. Ah, <laughs> there we go. All right. I, I, I like that. <laughs> I, I like a lot of that. The one thing I, 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 I disagree with, I would like to see adamantium be able to like penetrate vibranium, but I don't want it to have any like, like you know, because vibranium kind of has a mystical quality to it. I don't necessarily want adamantium to, to have, but it's coming from a celestial being. That's what I'm saying. At that point, it's going so, to have... Well, but does it have... Well, I want to say that's mystical. It's still very organic. Cosmic. Yeah. Cosmic. Yeah, that's not... Yeah. Which is what the vibranium is. It's more cosmic, yeah. I guess. There you go. Oh, man. That's I don't think like, it's mystical at all. I like the theory because... Because Jordan's not, you know, he doesn't have a bunch of the backstory. You know, because kind of in comics, even though Vibranium is technically older in comics, the idea is like adamantium is like just the hardest metal. It's the hardest substance. Okay. And then Vibranium is a near indestructible substance that also absorbs sound. Okay, so like, adamantium doesn't do the absorption. No, it doesn't. It's, it's just, just a it's blunt just, Yeah, object. it's just blunt. So yeah. it's just heavy and dense and to quote William Stryker from X2, the trick is Wolverine. You gotta keep it cool. You gotta keep it hot. <laughs> yeah, hot. You didn't get it hot. You gotta keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's all bubbly. And uh, Brian Cox. Oh, so good. Awesome, um, dude. And uh, so, like, it's nice to have that very difference because right. Jordan may not know this. Jordan, are you familiar with carbonadium? I was getting ready to bring that up. The discount adamantium. I, uh, I am not. No. So carbonadium is the Russian knockoff of adamantium. Yes. And it's highly radioactive. Right. So like uh, Omega Red, his body is infused with with, with, with the yes. carbonadium. So not only will he, you know, f you know, get up in you with those tentacles, but like... He's they, poisoning you yeah, slowly. poisoning you yeah. inside as well. That's what they call the death pheromone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like... It's one of his powers. And that's why Wolverine is such a good foil for him, because he can keep healing from right, it. Right, but it's killing... It still hurts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like... Yeah, it's like... Uh, it, where it would kill somebody else. He's just, it's doing what it's supposed to do right. to Wolverine, but it's just like he can survive it. So yeah. he's just stuck in it. <laughs> but um, because I, I think, especially with the way the world is, 
Rush is back on the radar. You know, there yeah. was a time in film where that was a big, big motivator. Are we going back there? Or do you think we're going back to the time I, when we can't have Rush as a villain? No, I or think we're going to the time a, that we can. Oh, you think we're going back there? Yeah. Even in this state of the world where everything's got to be nice, nice. Yeah, I not think. Too well, stepping that makes on toes. sense because we're hopefully going to get another Bond movie. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, true. Right. Dude, I had a customer in here the other day that had a killer idea mm-hmm. for, uh, we'll call him the wolf here in the shop. Um, he, uh, he was talking about doing Bond period films. Wasn't that the girl Bond? No. <laughs> hey Wow, thank you. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, like we can actually just like put them back in like World like, War Two, like a in, night or like a nineteen fifties. Yeah. Right? So, so, so having, kind of like yeah, rebooting. we don't have to have it modern. Yeah, okay. yeah. Having a, a phone in your shoe mm-hmm. is like yeah. edge. Yes. Yes. And like make it a nostalgia, you know, bomb. And uh, you know, a lot of the that the, sounds good. A lot of the the films are are I want titled. a bond that can use racial slurs like freely. Well, that's not that's how it was back for. in the fifties. No, maybe? but well, if we're gonna stick with our with our old bonds, the bonds that that, that slap people <laughs> of all genders. All right. Yeah, that's right. Um, Big ups to Sean Connery. Sean Equality, Connery. Quality, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These these, these hands are equal opportunity. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, like put it, a, a lot of the 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 James Bond movies are James Bond movies in title and name only, and like the stories they're based off are very different. Oh, of I'm course, told. yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't read a, a bunch of Ian Fleming's work, but oh, I know yeah, that like yeah. Casino Royale, there's like a lot of the the, the beats are from there, but like the story is oh, very b- different. Very, sure. So well, you're adapting a novel, most yeah, of the time. but just, adapt the real it. novel, like like take it, put sure. it in its time. Sure. You know, as we've seen with the um, Alcule, what's the uh, Murder on the Or. Oh, how do you or say it? Poirot. Poirot. Yeah, Poirot, yeah Poirot, Murder on the like, Orient Express, Death on the Nile, yeah. and coming up, uh, The Haunting in Venice. Yes. You know, where you can have these, and what's great is that the time, uh, the period stuff allows you to have these limitations that you have to work into. Like, it's nice to be like, oh, I have to, we can't make a call from the boat. Right, you yeah, know, yeah, we yeah. can't, we, you know, so we if have to the get The technology's there. limited. Yes. So, so it makes the hero a little more identifiable. Yeah. It you gets, know? It gets it back to like the uh, uh, John McClane kind of hero. Yes. Where it's like, yeah, I've got limited stuff at my disposal. You know, I, you I, get kind of back to that. Which I, I'm cool with Bond having some gadgets here. And there, he, oh, completely. But not basically having everything. Kind of yeah. where the Pierce Brosnan Bonds were going. Yeah. Like, everything. He had the, the, he was surfing, wasn't he, on a snow? Well, that was just like a really cool way that he survived this uh, really... S- <laughs> and the invisible car. Yeah. I guess that's kind the, of quasi that's, happening. Yeah, and that happened a couple times, I feel like. Oh, really? Yeah, we, we've seen it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that was a... Uh, I, I thought that was a really clever idea because nostalgia... Is definitely popular again. We oh, saw God, it rise yeah. in the pandemic. Oh yeah, and especially in comics. Trading cards were hot for two seconds. Nineties trading cards, which were never hot for for Marvel. Yeah, blew up. We had. Uh, we've even seen it in the comic book market where we even have uh, Joe Fix It this week. There you go. I think Eric was trying to talk a little bit about it last week, but uh, Joe Fix It was big in the eighties. Oh yeah. Uh, in a time we have we've had a new Lethal Protector. Um, oh, wait, that's right. A new a new Wolverine patch. Oh, we had a new patch. We had a new Ooh. mini series of patch that was five issues. Okay. And uh, you know, and they were getting writers like like that Joe Fix It. That's from Peter David. That's like the guy who's yeah, writing it at the time. Right. So like, it's a really clever way to, to, cause there's a lot of people who just like you are with your music where you're like, mm-hmm. you're not really finding anything. Like I'm stuck in a music. Like I only like the music I like and that's it. Mr. L, uh, Limp Biscuit over here. Limp yeah, Biscuit, over here. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm getting that way with like my X-Men. I just want my nineties and my eighties, like 75 to like 96 or 97. And then like, 2007 to like 2013 really good x-men stuff all right but like yeah you told me there hasn't been a good x-men story in a minute well it's just because i'm i got you can't old. relate to it i got that, yeah okay, i got old. Okay. they're doing a lot of high concept really interesting mm-hmm. stuff sure and i just don't care okay fair it's enough. just and it's to that point too where that you've got x-men red x-men gold oh, x-force no. yeah, yeah. You, you've got all too much the x uncanny x-men marauders You're right um let me see if there's any other uh x-related titles that are uh in your pretty X, yeah x-men legends oh um, yeah it's just like it's uh they have exterminators um, Extreme X Men number one came out last month. Ooh. I mean, I just named almost ten titles. Yeah, they're like the Batman for the DC. Yes, just too much of that. Uh, let's loop back around to Omega Red real quick. Okay, and then being the uh, uh, 
uh, having them as a villain for him being Russian and whatnot. Yeah. Do you think that in maybe a few years, obviously, it's going to be a while before yeah. we get X Men in the MCU? Yeah. You don't think that it's going to be a big issue or over, overly politicized? Do you think? Well, I mean, there's there's, there's precedent for this, pol- pol- okay. you know, like this. Sure. This is from the comics. Like this right. is a, this is a, a birth. And again, this you know, this is a character came out in like ninety two, ninety three. Very true. Um, X Men number four. Four. Yeah, Jim Lee and Claremont's run, the record breaking run, um, and you have. Uh, you know the tensions that had already been cooled. They were they were definitely uh, Russia was more the uh, quiet, quiet. You know, sleeping beast the, the at that sleeping time. Sleeping giant, totally. sleeping giant. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, there is something to be said about you know Top Gun Maverick. Sure. You know these things that like inspire like American pride of and course. all of that. And there's a way to do that with Captain America: New World. I don't think with Captain in the MCU actually ever. Over, you know, overstepped it to where it's like, oh, you know, rah rah America. Kind yeah, of stuff. they did it very only ulti- they, only in Ultimates. In yeah. Ultimates, they but that did. made yeah. sense. It did. It was it that was a really fun because it was almost a satire of Captain America. Completely, completely. But actually, turned into an awesome character. Yeah, it was cool to see this kind of crotchety old man. Yeah. kind of adapt to the new world and actually become a part of the world. Yeah, which was kind of awesome. Completely. Maybe we find a way to do that. With, with Omega Red. Maybe yeah. he becomes a good guy. Oh my gosh. We're not going to redeem Omega Red. Okay, come on now. Don't let them get to you. Or if they got to you already. They got Sabretooth good a few times. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> but that's interesting. That is interesting. Because yeah. you Omega Red is re- just a killing machine. I mean, straight up. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, Sabretooth was an abused kid by his zealot father. Right. You know, like, right. that's interesting. I mean, how come Michael Jackson didn't kill anybody then? How do you know he didn't? <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Sorry, I mean we haven't heard from Tito in a minute. We, we haven't. He, even though Tito, was, you okay, man? Remember when he was like promoting his album during his like brother's like oh god press yeah. for the funeral? I mean, I think MJ be proud of him though. Because like, no he did that. He dude, did, he MJ. hated Tito. Everyone hates Tito. No, man, he's the he's the cool one. Oh, his dad forgot his name on TV. Once. He's the Clancy <laughs> Yancey of the of the Jacksons. Okay, that's a deep cut thing. That's for you, AJ. Um, <laughs> I had a thought recently. Uh, because we are big fans of, I think all of us, if you watch the show, you're big fans of rewatching things. Are we going back to nostalgia? We're, we're playing on this nostalgia beat, kids. What are we calling this, uh, Jordan? Uh, we're not calling it anything yet. Jordan's going to figure it out. He's going to feel it. I like it. the re, uh, oh. Re- yeah, to rewatch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like let, let him, let, 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 let it come to him, all okay. right? He, he has to think about it. But... As uh, as people who like to rewatch things, you know, we've talked about how if I watch Die Hard, I'm going to watch all of them, sure. and, and then I'll start watching Lethal, Lethal Weapon. Weapon. Right. And uh, what are some things that you would like to watch again for the first time, for that like experience? And I want to softball this one, make it a little easy as we wrap up this evening. But I think, oh, man, I would love to rewatch Jurassic Park. Okay. You guys remember seeing Jurassic Park in the theater? Yeah. Did you guys? Okay, first of all, did you guys watch Jurassic Park in the Absolutely. theater? Absolutely. Um, I know. Yeah. So I was I was a kid. We still lived in Michigan, uh, and we went with uh, the our neighbors. They were a little bit older than my brother and I, uh, so we went to the theater. Uh, and and Matthew, uh, who was my age, uh, the two of us were sitting next to each other. We're watching the movie, and the moment when the velo- uh, the uh, di- the Dilophosaurus. Uh, oh right, shows up yeah. In uh, Dennis's uh, Explorer. Oh yeah, okay, and like yeah, yeah. just totally like caught us off guard. We jumped behind our seats and watched the rest of the film between the cracks of the seats that we haven't seen. That's the you can't recreate that kind of stuff. But Wait. that is a good yeah. That would say that's a perfect movie to start with because that would say that was one of the big blockbuster movies I can consciously remember yeah. sitting in a theater and having that experience, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I would even say some of it holds up still. The effects a still, lot of it does. It still a lot does. of it does, especially yeah. like the distant shots. I appreciate the um, the animatronic things because uh, a lot of that still looks really good. But right. um, it's just, it's a great idea. I feel like dinosaurs are lost on kids these days right. because of like technology and everything. But, you know, when we were kids, you know, that's, I think for most kids, I've heard it said, you know, it's the first thing you see that's, like, bigger than your parents. Sure. Okay. You know, so, yeah. like, it was crazy to see the bones in com- in to- or you know, in comics, in books, and all of that. And then when you saw, I mean, I love Steven Spielberg, the way, that, the, the attention to detail that he right. has. He creates, you know, you have these very few filmmakers that create an experience, and that is a full-blown experience. Oh, yeah. And it's something as fathers, 
I think that as we can rewatch it, when we get to show it to our you, children... You get to kind of vicariously <clears throat> live through it. I love that aspect of, like, showing, you know, you, just like when you were like when you were a kid and you heard it, something that your parents listened to musically. Uh, sure. And you liked it. Oh, You're of like, course. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, it, it has that special moment, and I love the bond that it creates. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, my girls, like, they love watching X-Men the Animated Series with me. There you go. They don't like. I don't think they. Can, they love Jubilee though. I think. I think they. I think we're gonna get some Jubilee sooner than later. Oh yeah, live yeah. action. Cause she's catching on. <clears throat> catching on. Asian. I think you can make it work. I think you can make it work. <laughs> I, I think that's awesome. All yeah, right, that's great, man. So in the future, guys, I'd like you to think about some things that you think are worthy of like rewatching because there are. I mean, there's movies that I I've never seen Godfather. I've never seen it. Never seen Godfather it's 2. It's like the perfect movie. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, it's like speaking another language. Right? <laughs> no, you can What did you compare? Oh, go, oh my God. Oh, angry. Okay. You can tell them okay. what you said. Okay. okay. Uh, Let me try to say We're doing like a little pre I was pre-show. watching. I was watching uh, Star Wars Phantom Menace today. Eric, uh, both, both Tuna and Eric came in separately and I told them separately. I like the movie, man. It's it's bad, but it's fun. Like I was the right age, and <laughs> I enjoy it more now as like an adult for some reason. And I was like, uh, the way it, f- yeah, keep oh going, gosh. keep going. It feels like it's the Goodfellas of 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 the Star Wars movies. Okay, now I don't mean in like caliber. <laughs> God, I can't wait to see what George's face is looking <laughs> like during this. I I don't mean in caliber, but I mean like it feels like it. They go. They go from Naboo uh-huh. to Tatooine to the freaking uh, to a Coruscant back to Naboo. Dude, that's a long time. A lot of like, what do they call yeah. that in the editing bay? How? But how? The yeah, swipes. it's a lot of swipes. It's a swipe. Swipes. Yeah. yeah. But, but how is it, Goodfellas? They never go to Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Tatooine I, I is I the Jersey. Jar Jar beating the death of somebody. Yeah. Tatooine is absolutely the Jersey. It's the Jersey of yeah. the Star Wars universe. <laughs> yeah, okay, there you, go. Yeah. you know it's run by gangsters. All right, Ooh. please don't don't come for me. I'm soft. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, I said that. And yeah, I he under- said that. <laughs> I, I, when I finished the sentence, I understood how wrong I was. But I hope that I have enlightened you guys today, kids. That's our show. If you like what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. Got so a you few know- more over the weeks. We see you. All right. We Thank see you. you. Yes, yes. We we're getting, getting a lot of views, and we're, we're, we're appreciating that. A lot of views for us, kids. So please tell your friends. Let them know uh, what we're doing here. We're just trying to. We're just three guys trying to bring you some uh, comic book shop talk, and, uh, and we oh, hope yeah. you guys are enjoying it. Eric, do you have any final thoughts for us? Uh, you know what? I, I'm going to have to go rewatch uh, Phantom Menace. Yeah. On yeah. bath salts. Yeah. Then I get to see where you're seeing it. From. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> so good when you're inebriated, okay? Uh, is there any kind of tuna talk you would like to put here at the end? Yeah, we got a few things. A couple of updates. Real quick, Roman, you made the comment about Tom Cruise saving people. The yes. The story is going viral. Tom Cruise, Jeremy Renner, Mission Impossible Ghost, uh, Ghost Protocol 2011. Ooh. Um, also, Jeremy Renner is currently starring in a series, Mayor of Kingstown. It's a crime drama. Okay. Paramount Plus uh, season premiere of season two, January 15th. So coming up real soon. Uh, And then last thing I have, crazy story news dropped today. Somebody met with the producers of the Bond franchise, Aaron Taylor Johnson. So it could be that Hawkeye's nemesis, remember he wanted to shoot him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hero. Could be that he's our next Bond. Oh, Jordan just just six boom, boom, just boom. six degrees of separation. Kevin Bacon to this thing for us. Oh yeah. Uh, oh can, yeah. What did you say before the show too? When we we're talking about Renner, you said what? You didn't see that coming? Yeah, I. You said that. <laughs> I didn't say that. That's an Eric thing. I, our whole lives, guys. 30, 30 freaking years you've been doing this, kids. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. I have been your host, Roman Chavez. I'm still Eric Icarus. And for the big tuna. That's me. We'll catch you on the next podcast.